And on behalf of the entire Quinnipiac University commu community, I want to welcome you to our Center for Medicine, Nursing, and Health Sciences. I think everyone here today recognizes that with the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, the delivery of health care in this country will change and it will face challenges. The Foundation's Reform to Transform initiative is about focusing attention on building a high-performing health care system that meets the needs of all people and is sustainable over the long haul. The ACA provides a great chance for Connecticut to move to the next level if we are smart enough to take full advantage of the opportunities it offers. We're here today to talk about the high cost of health care and what we as consumers, providers, government officials, employers can do about it. We're, we want to have a conversation about the challenges, but also about solutions. And what I found was the, um, the core answer to everything we're going to talk about today, the core answer really is that all the prices are too high. And everybody, with the exception of doctors and nurses, hospital administrators, uh, CT scan equipment salesmen, um, hospital CFOs, drug company executives, everybody except for the people actually providing the care is just making way too much money. If the article did something different, it took the, the abstract policy argument about health care. What should we do about health care? Who should pay? Why does it cost so much money? And turned it into something about real people, real patients who get real bills and are stuck with them. And everybody in this room has a story like that about someone they know or about them. The most uh, benign story would simply, be, uh, would simply be, well, I got this bill. I couldn't understand it. But thank God on my explanation of benefits from my insurance company, my insurance company is so great that they took this $58,000 bill and turned it into $8,000, and I only had to pay 20% of the $8,000. What a bargain. So I'm actually, instead of paying you know, $77 for, a, go for um, a box of gauze pads, I'm only paying $6. What a deal. And I can buy them at CVS for a dollar and a half. Clearly, the cost of health care has become unaffordable, and for the nation, it's unsustainable. There is an incentive in the current system to do more. Um, and frankly, if we're going to deal with the cost of health care delivery in this country, we've got to change those incentives. When I look at all of the uh, sort of charges across the board, you know, we're incentivizing primary care and we're trying to get, drive folks uh, uh, to the right place uh, at the right time for care. Um, but I look at the variance uh, in some of the costs. Um, and when we've got three and four times, you know, the cost of a hip from one facility to another for the same hardware, which you would argue in a peas, can peas economy, you know, has a, you know, a quality measure and you're going to sell, sell a certain number of them and you can look up online whether it's the best hip or not, I suppose, if you're in that field. Um, but does it really cost four times more from one hospital to another? I think the answer to that should be probably not. We're talking about big picture issues about how you get the consumer more engaged, have them be more responsible because, let's face it, all of us are insulated from the cost of care and we're make, not making true value decisions. We're not looking at cost and quality. The insurer, we always thought, had you know, so much skin in the game, which we love to talk about, that they were going to really hardline every one of those prices to get it to the most appropriate low level. Um, but, duh, they were just passing it on to the right. fully insured population. Yes. So I could have a plan <laughs> with, let's say, with, uh, you know, with Aetna. And I know I'm on the hook for 20%. Yes. So I see that you're in my network. That's great. Um, it could be that Cigna, if I had a Cigna plan and I was on the hook for 20% in your hospital, I could pay half the amount. That is possible, absolutely. And how would I ever know that? So you need, so the transparency really so we, has we to be everywhere. we agree that the consumer needs yes. transparency. And what I was trying to point out is some of the obstacles to getting that. I would willingly publish the rates that were paid between those providers, but I've signed contracts that say that I can't do that. Now, in the case of large employers, as, as many of you in the room know, the insurance companies really aren't insurance companies at all because the employer, um, is self-insuring and the insurance company is simply processing the claims. So they're at no risk, have no real incentive to do anything. So 
it's left to uh, the employers to uh, really go after the kind of transparency that they need on quality and on cost. What advice do you have for Connecticut and where should we focus our efforts? Transparency around cost and quality and it is defining, redefining, defining and perhaps broadening or narrowing, I don't know the result, um, uh, of government's role in all of this. We have a role to play, not only as an employer but as a regulator. To come back to the conversation we were having about different insurance companies having different deals with the same providers, um, I think uh, the time is ripe for, for um, a legislative fix that just says those contracts are just not enforceable. And we've got to provide incentives for consumers to find the highest value providers. It's absolutely necessary. Again, the current cost of the system is unsustainable. There are more efficient ways to deliver care. We've got to build the incentives in the system to find them.